Nyo. Nyo. Hello everybody, welcome back to the Spooky Nurse. Or shall I say welcome back to my channel. The channel is the Spooky Nurse. <laughs> um, my name is Jamie. Um, on this channel I do things from nursing to lifestyle, but put a spooky twist on it. I'm more of an alternative person, that type of thing. My past couple videos have been Puff. Puff. No. We're already starting and we're only like 20 seconds into the video. Today's video is a little bit different than what I've been doing. Um, this video is more related to nursing. Um, this was a video that was actually requested a while ago. Um, I just had never gotten around to doing it until now. So this video is about being a cardiac clinic outpatient nurse and the responsibilities that come along with my job. Previously when I had done a video about like nursing and what I do, um, I actually had two people reach out to me that like were really interested in what I do for my job and you know things that are response like things that I'm responsible responsible for as the nurse in the cardiac clinic. So that's what today's video is about. I'm going to be breaking it down into two categories that like are the main categories of my job. So the first part is being clinic based. So when I'm in clinic with my doctor and the other part of this video is going to be the non-clinic based. So things that I'm doing when I'm not in clinic with my doctor. So we'll start with the clinic portion because that's kind of less in depth to go through than it would be if I were not in clinic. As far as clinic based, so clinic means that I am with my doctor and he is seeing patients in a regular doctor's office. Um, I work for a very, I would say probably like there's three main systems within the Central Florida region and I work for one of the three major ones. So the clinic that I'm part of covers different regions. Mine just happens to be more centrally located to the area. Um, so when we're in clinic, he's seeing patients in the office, treating it like a normal, if you were to go to a doctor's appointment. Um, so things that I'm responsible for within this clinic is the doctor will see the patients. He comes out, number one, he'll tell me orders. I put in all of those orders for him in the computer. Um, I have more of an old school doctor, shall I say. Um, you have some newer doctors that um, are very tech savvy. My doctor is not like that, so I do a lot for him when it comes to the computer and putting stuff in. Um, so let's say he orders a stress test, an echocardiogram, and a follow-up in three months to review the testing with the patient. So I put the order in for the stress test. Let's say he orders a exercise treadmill, which is a GXT. I type that in the computer, put the diagnoses that go with it. Let's say we're doing it for chest pain. Um, the echo would be for valvular function, looking to see the ejection fraction, and then you put in a three-month follow-up. Um, so that's kind of that portion of that. And another part that I am responsible for during clinic is educating the patient on their plan of care. So I've noticed a lot with my patients when <laughs> they have visits with the doctor, they, it seems to go in one ear and out the other. You know, I get it if it's like something newly diagnosed, you know, I understand that but the doctor could literally come out, my doctor specifically, say the plan of care in front of them, and then I'll put the orders in, and then I get up to go tell them and reiterate the plan of care. And they're like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, oi. So it's, <laughs> he likes to watch me when I talk and he moves his head back and forth. Right, Po? Right, Po? Right, Po? <laughs> Sorry, anyway, I get distracted very easily. So really educating them, letting them know like, this is the testing that we're doing. Yes, doctor will say Bob ordered an echo on you in a stress test and a monitor for 30 days. So we're gonna take you over to checkout and we're gonna get that scheduled for you. 
or another thing that's a really big education moment is medication. So if a doctor adjusts a medication or starts a new medication or discontinues a medication, it is very important to reiterate this to the patient. I have learned that the more you reiterate in clinic and go over things, the more likely they will not call and ask you the same questions over and over again. So let's say we discontinued aspirin and started the patient on Eliquis 5 milligrams BID. I'm gonna go over to the patient, be like, hey, we're gonna have you stop taking the aspirin and you're gonna start taking Eliquis 5 milligrams once in the morning and once at night. Um, I'll ask the patient too, which pharmacy would you like me to send it to? Would you prefer a 30 day supply at a time or a 90 day supply at a time? And the patients will tell me and we'll go from there. <laughs> so medications are another big thing to educate your patients on in clinic. Last thing to educate your patients on when you're in the clinic, procedures. During this time, let's say my doctor comes out and he, order, he orders a electrophysiology study with a possible pacemaker implant. So I put the orders in, I give the patients their lab work to get done five to seven days prior to the procedure. And at this time I'm like reiterating and telling them, hey, I've ordered a electrophysiology study on you with a possible pacemaker implant. I've already put the orders in for that. And usually I would say 10 out of 10 times, like I've never had a patient who's like, he ordered a what procedure on me? They all are aware of the procedure. Your doctor should be telling this to the patients in the room. We're not gonna leave out a procedure, that's crazy. Um, but as far as letting them know, hey, my hospital scheduler will contact you probably in about two weeks to get you scheduled um, for a date and time that works well for you. And then on our end, I want you to complete and you give them a lab slip, at least I do. Um, we want you to complete this lab work in five to seven days prior to the procedure. So whenever she gives you that date and time for the procedure, you're gonna complete this a week prior to the procedure date. Um, and then too, I always tell them I will give you a call a week in advance and I go over instructions regarding the procedure. So it's a lot of just reiterating plan of care, procedure, meds, just staying on top of it because if you don't, your patients are going to be confused, stuff will fall through the cracks, patients won't take the meds correctly, it's a whole thing, or they don't get testing done, or they don't show up for the procedure, it's a whole thing. Another thing that I take care of during clinic time, um, if my doctor orders stat device checks, so device checks could be loop recorder, pacemaker, or defibrillator check, um, or a stat echocardiogram. So the echocardiograms usually aren't a thing. I actually did have a situation today in clinic where he ordered a stat echo on a patient um, just to look to see what their ejection fraction was. So we didn't even build a patient. We didn't do a full echo. We literally put the probe over the heart to look at the valves and see how well we were pumping. Literally like a two minute look. <laughs> um, it can be kind of stressful though because as the nurse you're trying to hurry up, get the orders put in, and then if your doctor orders a stat echo or device check, you have to get the patient's info down, run over to the device clinic or echo area, hey, can you add this patient on? And then sometimes you get pushed back and your doctors don't want to hear that. <laughs> they only want to hear, okay, the patient's being checked. They don't want to hear that, oh, they can't take the patient. It can be very stressful in that aspect, but you know, I think it's important, especially the device checks. If a patient got shocked a week ago and we never received a report from their ICD, we need to know why. Like, that's a big deal. Um, uh, another thing that I am responsible for as the nurse running a clinic with my doctor is looking up why the patients are here or if a certain test was done and my doctor can't find it in the computer. So like I told you, my doctor is not very tech savvy, so I have to do a lot of looking up for him in the system as far as, um, let's say a patient had, um, ooh, excuse me, let's say a patient had amyloid workup. Um, so looking for amyloidosis. Um, there is specific lab work that a patient has to get done and it's something called a PYP scan. So my doctor can't ever seem to find all of the pieces that fit together. So he'll know if we ordered the PYP workup or amyloidosis workup, I mean, 
he'll know he'll just be like hey can you find me the amyloid workup and i know i go hunting for the labs and the chart along with the imaging scan um and I would say nine times out of 10, I can give him an answer. I can find them for him. Or sometimes I have to let him know, hey, the patient didn't get it done. That's a whole nother issue. Um, also part of kind of that goes with that, looking up why the patient is at clinic that day. So I have a really good medical assistant that preps the charts very well. Um, she writes on a piece of paper why the patients are here, blah, blah, blah. Sometimes there's more to the story though. So let's say another doctor referred a new patient over for um, AFib, like atrial fibrillation. Well, have we tried anything as far as atrial fibrillation in the past that I can see? Have we already ordered a monitor that shows the percentage of atrial fibrillation? Have they ever had an ablation done before for atrial fibrillation? So just kind of looking up the why are we here to see a specialist for it? Um, once again, he's not very tech savvy, so I help out a lot in that manner. <laughs> um, another thing that I'm responsible for during clinic, looking for records. I cannot tell you, this is one of the most frustrating things about clinic ever. So a, patient, a new patient comes in, not part of our practice at all, from an outside practice, and they don't have records with them. So frustrating, or I have to dig in the chart for it. Um, but if they don't have records, I get them to sign an ROI, which is a release of information. I find out what doctor I request it for, have to fill out the paper, fax it over to the other doctor's office, and they'll send us the records. <laughs> um, another thing that I'm also responsible for, kind of like ending things up with the patient, is getting them over to check out, which this isn't really that big of a deal. Um, once I review and educate and go over the plan of care with the patient, I'm like, okay, we'll go get you on over to checkout. I take them to checkout, make sure they're seen, and the patient gets checked out. They get the testing ordered and the follow-ups ordered. Um, and then the last part, this is kind of non-clinic in a way, but I do it on clinic days because that's the only time I get to see my doctor. Um, reviewing stuff. So... Once all the patients are seen and it's time to review, I wait till all the patients are gone. And then by this time, my doctor is trying to dictate his notes from that day from the patients. But from before when I've seen him, a whole bunch of patient issues come up. Um, and this is the time to review clearances with my doctor from him to sign off on, like cardiac clearances of patients that need surgeries. Um, getting him to review device reports from pacemakers, defibrillators, loop recorders, letting me know if he wants any intervention with those. And then as far as just taking care of the triaging issues, um, like a patient calls in and they're not feeling good, here's the issue, what can we do to fix it? So kind of just reviewing issues that pop up over time and clearances in the device reports, which device reports are more specifically for electrophysiology nurses, um, which is what I am. I know if you deal with a general cardiologist or an interventionalist, you're not gonna be dealing with device reports. That is all EP related. <laughs> that is all of the clinic based. And I guess I should have started this at the beginning of the video, but, um, Clinics are usually th uh, two to three days a week, and um, EP nurses, we do all day clinics at my practice. This is something newer. Um, we used to do half days, but long story short, apparently it wasn't working out, so we have moved to all day clinics now. So those days, I'm in clinic all day with my doctor. You only have time to do clinic. You literally don't have time to do anything else. So this moves on to the next part of my job that um, include responsibilities, the non-clinic days. So days that I have off from clinic, what am I responsible for? What am I doing behind the scenes type of thing? So when you're not seeing patients in clinic with, when you're not seeing patients in clinic with your doctor, um, you're literally trying to play catch up on everything that has come in from when you were busy working. I mean, during clinic, you can sometimes do stuff on the side but when you can't do everything your clinics are usually really busy and you're trying to get patients in and out in a very timely fashion in a good manner um so on non-clinic days 
Um, I go through my in basket on, we use Epic. A lot of people use Epic. Um, but I go through my in basket on Epic um, and I get device reports. That is one of the first things I am in charge of and responsible for it. So I get all of the abnormal device reports for my patients. I review them if it's something super critical, like really the only thing that's really critical is a patient got shocked, <laughs> their defibrillator. I would see how many times did they get shocked? Was it just once? Did it? Did they have ATP therapy before? Or did it just go straight to shocking them? Um, and then two, how many times did they get shocked? If it was just once and they're doing okay, then okay, I'll get them a soon follow-up appointment with my doctor. Um, if it was more than once, they need to go straight to the hospital and I would call them and let them know this. <laughs> um, but other than that, if it's other stuff like runs of um, NSVT, um, episodes of VT that weren't too long, um, new episodes of atrial fibrillation, um, lead impedance issues. I prep it. I put the last time they were seen in office, the next time they're seen in office, what their last echo showed as far as EF, the last stress test or catheterization on file. Um, and then as far as meds, my doctor specifically cares about if it's a new episode of atrial fibrillation, um, are they on anticoagulation? And if not, why are they not? Um, and then if it's NSVT, AFib, RVR, episodes of VTAC, if they got shocked, um, are they on antiarrhythmics or beta blockers? If so, what are they on? So that's how I prep my reports. Um, Another thing that I'm responsible for in the non-clinic side of things is cardiac clearances and MRI forms. So, like I said, during clinic days, I review all the cardiac clearances with my doctor, see if the patients are cleared from a cardiac standpoint for whatever surgery they need, whether that be a colonoscopy, an endoscopy, a right knee arthroplasty, cataract surgery, dental treatment, you name it anything, a kidney transplant, a whole bunch goes into it. Um, I kind of prep them like device reports, last office visit, next office visit, echo, stress, if they're on anticoagulation, how long do they need to hold it for their procedure. Um, so I just write it all down on a sticky note so it's right there in front of his face for when he needs to sign them off, he can see it. Um, another part of a clearance too for patients is MRI forms. So if a patient has a device such as a pacemaker or defibrillator, they need clearance if they need an MRI. So that goes through the electrophysiology nurses. Um, so I usually go over to my device clinic once I receive the clearance and I just make sure that the um, device is MRI compatible, that it's safe for them to get the MRI and what setting to set the device. And then once you have that, you can fax it over to whatever office requested it. Same thing for clearances, you just fax the completed request over to whatever office requested it. Okay, what else? Sorry, I have like a little cheat sheet here of notes because if I didn't write all this down, this would be a hot mess. <laughs> I get too distracted. Um, another thing that I am in charge of as far as non-clinic based, patient phone calls and triaging. So this could be one of the hardest things about, I feel like my job, as far as there's only so much that I can do as an RN. Um, patients want an answer right then and there. Well, we can't always give it to them, which is kind of frustrating. Um, so patients call in, they leave me voicemails on my phone or they call into the triage line of, we have a whole team of triage nurses within my department, or not my department, within my like, office clinic based place. Um, they try to handle phone calls for what they can do, but they have a protocol they have to follow. So I end up looking to see what the issues are. If it's something I have to wait to the doc to talk to the doctor about, then I do. If it's something I might be able to help with, like maybe tell them to cut a medication in half due to blood pressure issues, I might. I still usually have to get clearance from the doctor to do that though. So calling patients back, answering what questions I can, if not telling them that I will have to speak to the doctor and get back to them. This is kind of 
not just electrophysiology nurses, this is within the whole practice, but usually you either, if you're not assigned to a clinic, you are sometimes assigned to wound check, walk-in nurse, or infusion nurse. So me being electrophysiology nurse, I usually get assigned to doing something called wound check. So these are patients that are post-procedure as far as pacemakers, defibrillators, and loop recorders. We do a quick check on their incision, we take off the band-aid um, and give them instructions, make sure there's no signs of infection, um, giving them instructions as far as arm restrictions and things that they should be looking out for and making sure that they have their first device check in place too. Um, that's more my realm of things. <laughs> Now, the other nurses, though, I have been put on the other two as well, walk-in and infusion. A walk-in nurse is a nurse that handles blood pressure issues, EKGs, or if you have to walk a patient over to the emergency room due to them needing care right away. <laughs> um, and then, two, you have to deal with the supervising physician in that um, aspect. So, like, let's say a patient comes in for a blood pressure check two weeks post, starting amlodipine, five milligrams, whatever. Um... You have to go to the supervising physician, make sure the blood pressures are okay, and if they're not, the supervising physician might tell you to start a medication every once in a while. That's that. And fusion nurse, so part of my practice has a um, heart failure clinic, and we can diurese patients in office by pushing medications, starting an IV and pushing those medications. So part of being that infusion nurse is you're trying to get an IV on these patients, and you're getting um, orders from the advanced nurse practitioners that run the clinic, it'll usually be like two milligrams of Bumex and hang a bag of IV magnesium. That's usually how that one goes, which that can be very frustrating because it is very hard to get IV. So dramatic. Um, IVs on these puffy patients. Good news is now though, if you can't get it, you can put the order in to get an IV done and you go downstairs and the professional IV team can help us. Um, this can be kind of frustrating doing either one of those three things, whether it be wound check, walk-in or infusion, because if you're in all day clinics and then on your off day you get assigned to do something else, you feel like you're kind of drowning sometimes and trying to play catch up. But, you know, someone's got to care for the patients, so we happen to be the winners. <laughs> okay, so like another thing, let's say you don't get put on walk-in, wound check, or infusion nurse. Um, another responsibility if you're not in clinic with your doctor is helping patients complete their FMLA or disability paperwork. Um, my practice has a rule where you have 14 days from the day that you received the paperwork. So FMLA is the bane of my existence. I absolutely hate it. Um, I actually have one to do tomorrow when I go into work. But it's basically like if a patient had a procedure or if they were really sick and were in the hospital or if they're a congestive heart failure patient and have routine follow-ups or if they're a device patient and have routine checks we fill out paperwork so their job won't fire them for it. <laughs> um, like I said, they can be very lengthy. It's a lot of investigating into the patient's chart and making sure we have all the facts straight of why they need FMLA and how long they need it for. Another thing that I am responsible for when I'm not in clinic, um, this kind of falls more on the medical assistant, but I help out when I can. Um, medication refills, so in Epic, there is an RX bin um, tab and my medical assistant is amazing and she usually keeps up with it every once in a while I'll get one in my staff message so I'll just help her out and refill it for her and this you just have to go back and make sure that the patient's following up like they're supposed to if not per protocol if they haven't followed up in a year we're only supposed to give a 90-day supply until they come see us so basically just making sure the patients are coming in when they should be so they can get the refills um, another thing that I am responsible for when I'm not in clinic is my doctor obviously is an electrophysiologist, like I said, so he does a lot of procedures, whether that be putting in pacemakers, doing electrophysiology studies, putting in defibrillators, putting in loop recorders, or doing ablations. So, since he does so many procedures, like I said, during clinic time, I tell the patients I call them seven days in advance, 
that's another part of my responsibility is I do the pre-procedural instructions for my patients. So depending on what they're getting done, if they're getting any procedure done, you have to hold anticoagulation like Eliquis, Pradaxa, Zeralto. We hold it for 48 hours prior. Um, if they're on Coumadin for AFib, then it's five days prior. If they're on Coumadin for a valve replacement, five days prior and bridge with Lovenox two days prior. A lot of rules. And then if they're having an ablation, if they're on any type of beta blockers or antiarrhythmics, we hold them for 48 hours prior, along with the anticoagulation. So procedure calls can take a lot of time. Sometimes a lot of patients are more needier than others. It just depends. <laughs> um, and then this kind of these last two bullet points I made as far as what else I'm responsible for when I'm not in clinic, they kind of go hand in hand. So one is helping out other nurses. So like, let's say a nurse calls out for that day because they're sick. Um, they have a doctor of their own to take care of. So they have their voicemails and tasks that they have to handle. Um, other nurses get assigned to help that nurse out. So sometimes like, let's say another doctor's nurse is out, I've been assigned on my off day to help that nurse with her voicemails and tasks. It sucks, but it is what it is. You can't reprimand someone for being sick. Or same thing if they go on vacation. We help out when we can. Or if another nurse is just super behind, even if they are there that day, um, I've helped and I've stepped in and done what I could to help that nurse because I know what it feels like to drown and it is absolutely no fun. <laughs> um, and then this is kind of coming full circle, this last bullet point. So if I'm not in clinic, Another responsibility that gets put on me as a nurse is to help a doctor whose nurse called out and help out in their clinic. So there has been many a times where another nurse has called out and I've had to go do her clinic with her doctor. Um, it's definitely can be a challenge. I've worked with many different doctors that aren't electrophysiology. I've worked with interventionists and general. Um, it can just be kind of frustrating because doctors get so used to their nurses and they're very set in their ways and you have to try your best as a nurse not knowing how your that doctor might run you try your best to adapt to what that doctor likes <laughs> sometimes some doctors like you have to go in the room with them to hear the orders and the plan of care my doctor doesn't do that he just comes out and tells me the orders i put them in and walk the patient over to check out not all doctors are like that though <laughs> But yeah, that one can be kind of frustrating too because you can get behind on your voicemails and tasks as well um, because you're helping out another clinic, but it happens. We're in a time of where nurses are very short staffed and we're helping out in any way that we can. Um, I can't believe I went through this whole board. I have a whiteboard, like I said, over here with notes and it was a lot. I feel like I've been talking for a while, but I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Um, it's something a little different than my alternative side. This is also another part of my life. I'm a nurse, it's what I do. I'm very passionate about being a nurse. I love helping people out. I do like how my job, I don't know how to put this into words. <laughs> I do like my job. It can just be very stressful at times. Cardiac is my jam and it always will be. Um, I want to one day transition into where I'm kind of not in a outpatient nurse role anymore as far as clinic based, but I still want to do outpatient, just something a little different, I think one day, but this has been such a great stepping stone of a job and I've learned so much and I thought I knew about cardiac before. I had no idea until I started this job. <laughs> but those are all of the roles and responsibilities um, that I have as a cardiac clinic outpatient nurse. Like I said, if you guys have any questions regarding anything that I went over, any further questions, um, leave them down in the comments below. I would be more than happy to answer them. Um, and if you guys want to see any other videos, you can also leave those recommendations down below as well but I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.